we'll start with PPI that came out yes. this morning and then you had CPI yesterday. Uh, it's all about the consumer. It's all about the economy. The data didn't quite jive with, with each other. Yeah. They were very different reports. Yeah, yes and no, right? I mean, first off, PPI came in a little less than expected, which is good. And that's usually because we kind of uh, import our deflation from China. China's in a slowdown. Uh, that's good for the U.S. because we're buying stuff cheaper from China and we do buy a lot of stuff from China. Um, but I think the CPI report was more interesting in the fact that, number one, it came a little higher than expected. A lot of that just says that the consumer was buying a lot of stuff in December. Um, you know, we had a really strong consumer. But also, I think it was really fascinating, is for the first time in two years, you saw wages outpacing inflation, right? Inflation has kind of been ahead of wages for so long. And now for the last six months, it's been the opposite. So if you have inflation continuing to come down and you have wages continuing to grow, that's like a fantastic combination for this year. And I don't think our economists are talking about it enough. No, well, actually, we had somebody yeah. mention that earlier, though, that we are getting deflation because Jose Yardani was here because he said because we're getting all these goods from China and yeah. we're getting them cheaper. And you're, you know, there's a lot of reports. Their economy obviously is not what they say it is. Um, let's talk about the market. You, you've always been very bullish. Uh, we, we were on television a lot together. Um, are, should we make any adjustments for 2024 now that we're a couple of weeks in of trading? What do you think? I do. I think there's a lot of skepticism. So I think last year was all about pessimism. No one believed the economy was going to have a soft landing. Uh, no one believed the stock market could go up. So now it's like, OK, we had this great year, but I'm still skeptical that I should be in the stock market. So I think the two mistake investors are going to make, and I see this a lot because we, we review a lot of portfolios every month. Number one is a lot of investors still sitting in cash getting that 5%. Sounds great. But again, the Fed's probably going to cut interest rates this year, which means that 5% is probably going away. You may be at 4 or 3%. And number two, where money is getting funneled, is the Magnificent Seven. Seven mega cap names that trade at 30 times forward earnings. They're not cheap. Pay very little in dividends, about 0.19%. Meanwhile, the rest of the market is still on sale. If you take those seven names out of the S&P 500, it trades more for like 16 times forward earnings, which is historically relatively cheap. So you don't really have that expensive a market even though we're close to an all-time record high. You That's were important. bullish at, in 2023 when no one else, I will, you and Adam Johnson, I will say, were bullish and when everybody else was saying yeah. that the economy was going to crater and we were all going to die. Uh, real quick, <laughs> uh, Goldman Sachs is coming out Tuesday. You know, investment banking revenue for Q4, I think could actually be an interesting piece of what they're going to tell us. And I'm wondering about, about Goldman's uh, quarter. And that report on Tuesday, I think it might be good. I think you're right. Well, if you saw the big banks today, their M&A <laughs> activity a mess. picked up. <laughs> today was a mess. It was a mess today, but the M&A activity did pick up because we know where interest rates are going to be. Uh, they're going to be coming down, right? So that's great for M&A activity. And with Goldman, we should see that uptick. Also, they kind of get rid of their consumer business, yeah. which was not great. So I think that coupled it's good, with though. The, no, it is good. Well, it's good to get rid of that. They're focused on what they do best, investment banking and talking about trading cheap. It trades for half the multiple of the S&P 500, 10 times forward earnings. There's so many stocks that trade like that right now um, that, again, like I'm a kid in the candy store, just don't concentrate into those momentum names that were basically where everyone's following their money. I think that's going to be a big mistake at some point. Yeah, kind of look around, maybe see some small, some mid caps. Uh, I think there's some financials that are cheap right now, but I'm bummed. A little joke. No, oh, no. You don't get no? Cheryl, I'm so slow on a Friday. Yeah. 